are landfills are filling up. Fully one-fifth of everything that's sent there is food waste, and close to half of that is due to the huge amount of waste in food-related businesses, like restaurants, grocery stores, and food manufacturers. This is all due to change in 2015, when organic material will be banned from the landfill. But how to encourage members of the food industry to take action now rather than wait till it's no longer a choice? Almost 25% of restaurants reported that they're doing some kind of organics recycling already. Metro Vancouver staff was on hand at a recent food services expo to get the message across. Behavioral change is always a tough sell. Just think about it. Do you like having to change the way you've always done things? Of course not. Nobody does. You often have to change how your kitchen is set up. Not everyone's able to do that so easily. It's a cultural change for restaurants. Staff have to adopt new practices. So this is why we're really thinking that it's you know, a good idea to just start kind of getting moving on that right now, even though the ban is in two years. Um, probably there's quite a bit that needs to happen in most restaurants to, to be able to accommodate the ban when it comes in. When it comes to food scraps or any kind of recycling, again, people inherently know what's the right thing to do, um, but there's a big job for us to do, and as a society, how do we make this our social norm, our, our normal way of handling garbage, whether you're in a public space, whether you're at home, whether you're at your place of business. We want recycling and waste diversion uh, to be our primary way of how we manage our waste. Thank you very much indeed. Restaurants and other food-related businesses will have to start separating their organic material by 2015 so it can be picked up and brought to a commercial composting facility. But some businesses are already way ahead of the curve. Wild Rice Restaurants has two locations, both with organics collection programs put in place long ago. At the New Westminster location, a communal organics bin shared by many businesses makes the process economically feasible. We're very lucky that the entire River Market has an organics program set in place. So we have uh, organics bins set up around the kitchen. We have one near our prep table. So any trimmings of vegetables gets thrown into that organics bin. And then we have another organics bin set up right next to our, our dish pit. So that when servers come in and clear their plates, that's where the food scraps from the restaurant go. It's easy to get rid of your organic snow. It's just a matter of continuing to follow up with the staff that they're sorting properly. And, but I think that's no different than the challenge of uh, sort, uh, sorting out your glass and metals and plastics way back when. At Trafalgar's, there's a different approach to keeping organics out of the landfill, an on-site composting system. It's an idea that makes good business sense. It's very expensive to remove waste. And so we were getting our big dumpster tipped four times per week. And the total cost on that was about $1,000 per month. We've gone to having just a residential size bin that's removed once per week. We've done lots of calculations and this machine will pay for itself in approximately two years. And after that, we'll be making a profit. Tara Breads was an early adopter of organics collection. In the case of a large business like this, pickup for one business alone can be a viable solution. We have separate, a, a mixing area, a baking area, a prep area. Each have their own bins and everybody working in that department is responsible for their own compost bin. So as they fill it at the end of their shift, they take it out. Three different businesses with three different approaches, but none of them facing any upheaval in 2015 when the organics ban takes effect, since disposing of food scraps separately is already business as usual. Yeah.